بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته it's a pleasure to be with you to teach this book which I have recently written. As you can see it is called Selections from the Glorious Quran and it contains eight <coughs> selections <coughs> from the Quran from different parts of the Quran and each lesson <coughs> is uh, made up of four sections. The first section is the text of the Quran, mere text of the Quran, but it has been taken from the uh, Mus'haf al Madina, Mus'haf al Madina, published by the King Fahad Quran Printing Complex. But there is a special feature, and that is I have redistributed the text because the text usually the words are close to each other but I have distributed the, the words in such a way that they are really clear for those who want to read easily. That is the first second. Second section is uh, lexical and grammatical uh, explanations. Uh, here I explain, I uh, write the f first line of the selection, write the translation into English, and then comes the lexical and grammatical 
analysis. Uh, if there are single words, they are explained, and grammatical uh, constructions are also explained. Uh, then I go to the second line and third line uh, up to the end of the uh, verses in the selection. The third uh, section is more, uh, no, additional notes, additional notes, where I have um, added certain verses of the Quran, ayat, additional ayat, and uh, information also. Sometimes I mention the meanings of certain words, Quranic words in the modern Arabic language so that you get in touch with the language of the day also. And the last section is the <coughs> exercises. Uh, inshallah we'll do that all, all, the, all that. <coughs> and I would request you to read the lines, the ayat, which are not only the ayat that, that are mentioned here, but ayat which go before and after this ayat, so that you get a complete picture of what is being said in the uh, text. <clears throat> now, before we uh, start the book, I would like you to I'd like to give a brief uh, uh, explanation of the Quranic orthography. That is the spelling and the signs and symbols that are mentioned in the, that are used in the Quranic text because most of the people don't know this. The Quran has got its own orthography, its own spelling and its own signs and symbols which are not used in normal Arabic writing. So I'll start with that because we are going to read the texts and in the text you'll come across these signs and symbols and spellings which are not usually used in the normal Arabic writing. So to be conversant with these peculiarities I'll give you an uh, explanation of these things, Quranic orthography. Now the Quranic text that we use, if we take a page of the Quran, any page, it contains four elements. It contains four different elements. They have been, of course, synchronized now, but they are four different elements. The first element is the consonantal text of the Quran. Now this is the consonantal text of the Quran without vowels, only consonants. Of course long vowels are incorporated like waw, alif, ya. These are incorporated. These are called huruf uh, al-illa, they are huruf. But the short vowels, fatha, wama, kasra and all these, these are not there. Not even the dots. Now this is the beginning, is the, the beginning of Surat uh, Al-An'am. The first two words are not here, probably in the first page, in the previous page. Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaq as-samawati. Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaq as-samawati. No dots here. Wal-arda. Wa ja'ala. See this is Jim Ayn Lam. Ja'ala. الظلماتي والنور ثم الذين ثم الذين كفروا كفر واو ذس ألف كفروا بربهم بربهم يعدلون ذس نون هو الذي هو الذي خلقكم من طين ثم قضاء أجلا. The alif is here and jim is here. Next, next to the rest of the word. ثم قضاء أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده. دال هير and ها هير عنده. 
Thumma antum tam tarun. Tam tarun. Wa huwa. Wa huwa Allahu fis samawati. Tahiya. Wa fil ardi. Abad here. Ya'lamu. This is Ya'lamu. Sirrakum wa jaharakum. Now this is the consonantal text which was prepared by or under the supervision of Uthman anhu, and that is why it is called the Uthmanic text or Uthmanic codex Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani Please be clear that Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani does not mean a style of writing it means the text as was prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu, not by him, by, by his uh, uh, calligraphists, under his supervision. So the first element, when we say such and such text confirms to Ar-Rasmul Uthmani, what does it mean? It means that the spelling of the words confirm to the Ar-Rasmul Uthmani by the text uh, confirms to the text prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu. For example, as samawat has no alif. So if you write as samawat, wow, and then alif, complete alif, it does not confirm to the Uthmanic text. But if you write without the alif or a short alif after wow, then it confirms to the Quranic, uh, Uthmanic text. So the first element in the Quranic text is uh, Rasm al Uthmani which is the consonantal text prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu. The second element is the dots which were added later on. For example, Khalaqa, Kha has no dot. Kha has no dot. Qaf has no dot. Samawatta has no dot. Now in those days, <coughs> The Arabs knew the Quran, the Muslims knew the Quran by heart. It was only a, a support. But most of the people, most of the Sahabas knew the Quran by heart. So they, 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 they can easily read the text. So the dots were added later on when the uh, when, when uh, non-Arabs entered into Islam and uh, they could not read this text, dots were added. That is the second, it's called Al-I'jam. I'll write this. The first is Ar-Ras Al-Uthmani Ar-Ras Al-Uthmani The second is Al Al-I'jam Al-I'jam is Masdar from which uh, conjugation which form yes from the fourth form A'jama يُعْجِمُ إِعْجَامٌ إِعْجَامٌ is putting the dots. That is why a dotted letter is called حَرْفٌ مُعْجَم It is a اسم المفعول حَرْف مُعْجَم حَرْفٌ مُعْجَم is a dotted letter like like جيم and خا but حا for example is غير مُعْجَم Harf ghayru mu'jam, undotted letter. Dal is ghayr mu'jam, dal is mu'jam. Ra is ghayr mu'jam, zai is mu'jam. Seen, ghayr mu'jam, sheen, mu'jam. So al-i'jam is the process of adding the dots to the letters. The third yeah. 
element is a what a what means the vowel points like fatha lamma kasra madda shadda all these are included in a what in the indian subcontinent they use the word al-i'rab i'rab that is not correct but <clears throat> i'rab you must have learned in the arabic grammar is to to find out the, the correct ending of a noun or a verb in the sentence for example indi kitabun is marfu' qara'tu kitaban read a book is mansub وجدت هذا في كتاب I found this in a book this majroor now this is i'rab the changing of the endings of a noun or a verb mudhari' to show its function in the sentence that is i'rab which in european uh, 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 language is called declension declension of a noun <coughs> There is Arab, but calling the, uh, the vowel marks, vowel points as Arab is, is, is not very correct. So it is called Adopt. Adopt. <coughs> These are the uh, three points. The, the uh, uh, consonantal text prepared by Uthman radiallahu anhu, which does not have either dots or the vowel points. Later on, vowel points were added, uh, dots were added. Later on, vowel points were also added. In the beginning, vowel points were not uh, like the one we have, lines, but there were dots also. Dots in front, dots below, and dot above. That is why, if you remember in Urdu, the fatha is called zabar. Zabar means above. Zair, zair means below. Pesh means in front. So they, these were, these indicate the positions of these points in the writing. They were dots, but in a different color, different ink. Red dots, above is fatha, below is kasra, and in front of it was vamma. But later on developments <coughs> uh, were made and we have different forms. In Ajam, there are very little difference uh, in different countries. There is only one difference which I would like to mention. In Morocco, Qaf is one dot above. One dot above is Qaf. One dot below is Fa. So if they want to write Qif, which means stop, road sign, they write like this. If you go to Morocco, be careful. <laughs> you may go right into the arms of a policeman. Moroccans read Qira'a, uh, which is called Warsh. Warsh. So they write also in this writing Qaf uh, one dot above and Fa one dot below. And we in the uh, Quran complex, King Fat Quran complex, we have published Quran according to verse also. So we get a lot of letters from different parts of the world saying, you don't know how to read the, write the Quran. <laughs> you write one dot for Qaf. <clears throat> so we have to explain to them that this is how the Moroccans write. With regard to adopt, there are different styles of dot. In, in the Indian subcontinent, there is one dot, which is not very different, but it's different from the, from the dot system that is used in Arab countries. 
Turks, they have a different type of dot. And Warsh, in Morocco, it has completely different uh, kind of dot. It's all systems, different system, but it doesn't, doesn't change anything. The fourth element, Alamatul Waqf. Alamatul Waqf means punctuation marks. These are also different countries have different systems. India and Pakistan, they have got a different system. In Arab countries, they have got a different system. And these are of recent origin, maybe about 200 years old, 250 years old, not very old. That's to guide the reader where to stop, where not to stop. But in the Indian subcontinent, they have got so many signs that one get, gets confused. There, there, there are a lot of signs and the, some of the signs are contradictory. One sign says you stop, the other sign says don't stop. <laughs> in the King Fahd Quran complex uh, Quran, we have got only five Three or five or six. I'll explain to you later on when we come to that. Alamatul Waqf. So these are the uh, four elements uh, that, can, that are contained in the Quranic text. So the, the very important thing is that it should confirm to the Arras al Uthman. Now, ulama have permitted a single line or one or two lines, if you are writing an article and you want to quote the Qur'an, if you write a line, one or two lines, ayat, you can use, you can write these ayat in the ordinary, normal Arabic script. One or two lines is allowed. But not the whole of the Qur'an or whole of the Surah. It should confirm to the Ar-Rasm al-Uthmani. Because here there are volumes have been written about where Alif has been added, where Alif has been omitted, where Waw has been omitted, where Waw has been written. So there's a whole lot of works, books written. So we can be very sure, even if we don't find here, we can be very sure that this little word was actually like this. There is a wall there, there is no alif there. So it has been well guarded and you can go to the books and find out the real word, <coughs> real uh, status of the word. <coughs> that is why ulama do not allow that the whole Quran be written in the modern script. Because more modern spelling it differs from place to place. In Egypt there is a system. In Syria there is another system. In Egypt, for example, Mi'atun, 100. Egypt, Egyptians and most of the Arab countries, they write with an alif. You must have seen this. Mi'atun. But in Syria they write like this, without alif. In Egyptian, Egyptian Arabic, Ya is written without dots. In Syrian, with dots. If you, if a Syrian sees a word like Kursi, for example, written without a dot, it will get very confused and take a spend. Even if it is in a book, it will put two dots. But Egyptians don't write. Without, they write without dots. So there's a lot of difference between different countries, Arab countries, with regard to writing. So if, we, if you begin to write the Quran according to the normal Arabic script or normal Arabic orthography, then there'll be confusion. That is why it is best to stick to the, the ancient text. As all uh, 
works of legacy. Now next we come to the signs and symbols that are used in the Quran, <coughs> Quranic text, which are different from the orthography used in normal Arabic script. Of course I'll give you some of the examples but uh, it will take a lot of time to speak to you about all these signs. The first sign or the first uh, difference, you see, ah, Hamza plus Alif, we write like this in more no, normal script, for example, Adam, we write like this, Amana, we write like this. But in the Quranic script, it's Hamza plus Alif. Ah, because A ah means Hamza plus Alif. Just like Ba is Ba plus Alif, Ta is Ta, ta plus Alif. So Hamza plus Alif is Ah. So we write like this in the Quranic script, not like this. Now, if it's Lam Alif, if the Hamza is placed on top of the Alif, it is Hamza followed by Fatha, it is Ah. For example, Al Amnu. But please note, if it is placed between the two lines here, it is Hamza plus Fatha plus Alif. Ah. Did you get that? Yes. Because it is as if it is uh, Alif, it's like this Alif plus uh, uh, Hamza plus Alif, this is Hamza plus Alif. But if it's placed here, it is only Hamza followed by Fatha. This is Hamza, Fatha, plus Alif. Akhiratu. This information you will not find any, even in, in, the, in the pages they have written about this, they have not written this. So this is al Akhiratu. Azif, azifatil Azifatu. So it will be written, the Hamza will be here, between the two lines, not on top of the... Right. Now, Sukoon in the Mus'haf is like this, which is actually the head of jim, jazm. Jazm means cutting, that is removing the bubble. Ajrun, for example. So, this is head of jim, which has been, of course, later on simplified to this. In normal Arabic, this is the Sukoon. But this in Arab, in the Quranic script, a small circle, means a letter which is not pronounced. Please remember this. Like Amanun, this Alif is not pronounced. Ula'ika, the Waw is not pronounced. Ulul Arham, Ulul Albab, the Waw is not pronounced. So, Ulu will be written like this. Ulu. Ula'ika also, the wall will have. Now, there is another version of this circle. It's elongated. This is complete circle, this is elongated. This is usually placed on the word Anna, but there are also a few more words. This means that the Alif is not pronounced in continuous reading, but it is to be pronounced in the pausal form. When you pause Anna, you read the Alif, pronounce the Alif. But Anna Muhammadun, Anna Talibun, then you don't pronounce the alif, you, as if it is uh, Hamza plus Noon Fatha, Ana, not Ana. So it has two, two pronunciations, one in pausal form, where alif is pronounced, Ana, Manja, who came, with Ana, with the alif pronounced, Ana, but Ana Jitu. Here you don't pronounce. So this elongated uh, uh, circle 
is placed on, on this word and there are other words also. Now, if you have like this, noon without a sukoon, the next letter has a shadda. Noon has no sukoon, and the following first letter has a shadda, that means noon is assimilated in the next word, the following letter. So you pronounce, you don't pronounce min rabbika, you say mir rabbika. Mil ladun, min ladun, mil ladun. Noon has no sukun, no, 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 no sukun, and the first letter following it has a shadda. The next, no has no sukun, but the first, the following letter has no shadda. Here it is partial assimilation. This is complete assimilation, mir rabbika, noon completely is lost, it becomes ra, if it is followed by lam, it becomes lam, mil ladunka. But if there is no shadda, noon has no sukoon, but the following letter has no shadda, it means it is partial assimilation, idham naqis. How do you pronounce it? You say, Mayn yaqul. The noon, nasality of the noon is there. Mayn yaqul. Mayn wal. Mayn wal. Uh, it's not mayn yaqul. Mayn wal. No. With na, the nasal quality of the noon is retained. And there is idgham. Idgham, which is naqis, which is incomplete. Now, as you know, Tanween is actually Noon Sakina. You say Kitabun, you should have written Ba, Dhamma, Noon Sakina. But we don't write like this. We double the Dhamma, Kitabun, Kitaban, Kitabin. So the Tanween is actually, what is it? It is Noon Sakina. So, what applies to Noon Sakina here also applies to Tanween. How to differentiate between the Tanween? If there is Idram or not? You follow me? Here, the Fatha, second Fatha is placed right on top of the first Fatha. Here the kasara, second kasara is placed right below the first kasara. Vamma also, this is simplified. Vamma also, two dhammas placed one above the other. This is called a tarkib. A tarkib means one being placed above the other. Now this signifies ilhar. Likulli min had. There is no idgham or ikhfa. The kulli min had. Aw min, you pronounce the noon and its point of articulation. The kulli min had. This is called tatabur. That is one fatha following the other fatha. Not being on top of it, but coming after it. Also kasra. Also dhamma. This means this idgham. If it is next letter it has got a shadda, it means idgham kamil. And if it has no shadda, then it's idgham naqis. There is also what is called al ikhfa. Have you heard of it? Al-Ikhfa. al means pronouncing the noon not from the point of articulation of noon, which is behind the upper teeth, but from the point of articulation of the next letter. 
You have it in English also. I N you say in. The N is pronounced from behind the teeth. Reach, say in. What do you say? Ink. Do you pronounce the N from the from behind the teeth? From the calf, the, from the key, from the point of articulation of K. You say ink. That is the ikhfa. In the Quran, in Arabic, you say anqadha. He saved. An. Noon will not have sukoon because it is ikhfa. Say an. Qadha. With K also with Kaf, Ankalan, Inna Ladaina Ankalan. This is called Al Ikhfa. Ikhfa means hiding, hiding the noon, the pronunciation of the noon, not from its uh, point of articulation, but from the point of articulation of the following letter. In British English, M. When M comes before F, you say comfort, come. You don't say come. Comfort. In Arabic also you say anf. Nose? You say anf. This is ikhfa, anf. So these are two examples. And later on in the Tajweed class, of course, you will learn this. Uh, <coughs> Uh, ikhfa and idgham, they are indicated by this uh, device. The noon has no sukoon, and the following letter, if it has shadda, that means it's complete uh, idgham. If it has no shadda, it is partial idgham, or it is ikhfa. With regard to hamza, I must, uh, I must have told you before that in the ancient Arabic script this was Hamza. This was Hamza. So if, they, if you write like this It should be pronounced, how should it be pronounced? Ma, ma, Hamza, which means the closure of the glottis. You know, there are vocal cords, vocal cords. If they come together, the glottis is closed, then Hamza is pronounced. Ma, but later on, when writing developed, we had wow for long vowel. Ulu. We had ya for long kasra. Long kasra. Fi. Uli. For long fatha, what to do? They employed the hamza. They employed the Hamza to indicate what? To indicate the lengthening of Fatha. So we want to say Ma, Mim Fatha. We want to say Ma, Mim plus Alif. Okay, but we have already seen that Mim plus Alif is Ma. How to differentiate? So they, what, they did, that what they did was this Ayn. They cut off the head of the ayin and put it on top of the alif. So if you write the hamza, uh, the top, of the, the head of the ayin, it is hamza. If you don't write, then it is alif. Alif means what? Lengthening of the fatha. So to differentiate between the regional function of, fatha, of alif, the 
secondary function of alif they have to differentiate so the hamza the ayn the head of the ayn was placed on the alif to indicate hamza and without the head of the ayn it was alif alif means lengthening of the fatha so ma was mim alif and ma was mim alif with the head of the ayn if the hamza is at the beginning of a word it is either placed on top of alif or below the alif when top of the alif if the hamza has fatha or dhamma for example abun the hamza is on top of the alif ummun also on top of the alif but ibratun needle ibrahim is placed below the alif this is a normal arabic script alif has the hamza has two positions on top of the alif or below the alif only the first hamza but in the mushaf quranic orthography hamza wherever comes if it has kasra it will come below the ya uh, below the either below the alif or below the ya or below the waw so we say ulaika the waw will have this circle alif Hamza will be written below the ya. And even if Hamza comes with the alif, at the end of the word, it will be written below the alif. So this is the speciality of the Quranic orthography. And also, lu'i. Wow. Hamza comes below the wow. Because it is, it is, it is at kasra. Yes. So that is one of the speciality, but not in the normal Quran, normal Arabic script. We will write Hamza on top of the alif, only at the beginning, below the alif, only the beginning of a word, not the not at the middle. Malaika, for example, Malaika will write the Hamza on top of the ya, not below the ya. Now there is, uh, I told you about this. Madda, this is called Madda. Madda means stretching. Madda yamuddu, to stretch. And Madda tun is the, the, the sign of stretching. The, now in the Quranic uh, Arabic, there is an extra lengthening of the vowels. Long vowels. Long vowels are what? Fatha, uh, alif, waw, ya. Kitabun. Alif. Fi is ya. And qu, anfusakum qu is waw. And long vowels are equal to two short vowels. So kitabun, ma for example, meme has got ma, one, one, one fatha, ma, it equals to the, the length of period as two fathas. The same way, fi, fi, two kasras, fu, two vammas. But in the Quran, Quranic Arabic, there are certain situations where these fatha, alif, waw, and ya receive extra lengthening. And this extra lengthening is shown by this sign. Okay, when does the, when do the long vowels receive extra lengthening? Two things. 
Number one, when they are followed by a Hamza. When they are followed by a Hamza. For example, Ma'un. In normal Arabic, we say Ma'un. But in the Quran, we say Ma'un. Either four vowels or six vowels. Ma'un. Ja'a. And that is to bring out the Hamza, otherwise the Hamza will get lost. Ma'un. Hamza is a very, uh, very difficult sound to be pronounced. So it has to be brought out, pronounced uh, clearly, so the vowel is lengthened. Ma'un. Ja'a. Wa'u. Su'un. Ya ji a. So this vowel, the madda in, in Quranic orthography signifies extra lengthening. It does not signify Hamza plus Alif. Ja su un. Jia. If you hear an Imam saying fa lengthening, what do you expect? Is it fa isun or fa sikun? It must be fa isun because hamza. It can't be fa sikun. Fa sikun without lengthening. Fa sikun, but fa isun. This is the first thing. Second, when the Alif Wawiya are followed by a Sakin letter, Dabbatun, there are two B's, two bars. The first has what? Sukun. Dab batun. Waladin. Lam has there are two lams. First lam is sakin, the second lam has kasra. There are certain letters of Arabic whose name ends in sukun. Like this letter, noon. Noon, wa, noon. What is the last letter? Noon. Sakin or mutharrik? Sakin. So it also has lengthening noon. In the Quran. Qaf. Kaf. Ha. Ha, is, ha does not end in sukun. Ha. Like in Kaf. Ha, ya, no sukun. Ain, there is sukun. Saad, there is sukun. So extra lengthening, the letter, uh, the alif wa ya receive extra lengthening if they are followed by what? Hamza or sakin letter. A sukun. So the sign of lengthening, extra lengthening is this one. Please don't confuse this with normal Arabic madda, like Adam. We don't, we write Adam like this. But ma'un, dabbatun, dabbatun should also have the madda. Here one more point. If the alif wawiya are in one word and the hamza is another word, then you have got a choice either to lengthen or not to lengthen.
فور اگزامپل ما ان ما الف ان حمزه یو گٹ دی چوائس آئی دا ٹو لینگتھن اٹ اور ناٹ ٹو لینگتھن ان انڈین مصحف انڈین پاکستانی دے آر ٹو ٹائپس آف مدد جی ویری ہیوی مدد لائک دس is for the, the one which you have to pronounce and a light madda like this for the one which is where you have the choice. But in the Middle East and Mus'haf uh, there's only one type of madda and then <coughs> the differentiation you have to be learned by the uh, reader. I think these are some of the very important points that you must learn. Suffice with this and go back and, and go to the Alamatul Waqf, the punctuation marks. <clears throat> the punctuation marks which are called Alamatul Waqf One, two, three, four, five. These are the five signs that are used in the Medina Mus'haf. Very simple and easy to understand. Meme stands for Waqf Lazim. Waqf Lazim. That's compulsory pause. Lazim. If you don't stop there, don't make a pause, the meaning may change. I'll give an example. The ayah, Innama yastajibu alladheena yasma'oon. Then comes, Wal mawta yab'athuhum Allah. Innama yastajibu alladheena yasma'oon. Only those who hear respond. Innama yastajibu alladheena yasma'oon. Only those respond who hear. Wal mawta yab'athuhum Allah. And the dead, Allah will raise them up. If you don't stop here, Innama yastajibu alladheena yasma'oon wal mawta. That means those who hear and the dead respond. So the meaning changes. So there are a few places where you will find meme, which means flazim, you have to make a stop. It is compulsory, mandatory. Jim means waqf jaiz. Jaiz, it's permissible to stop either you pause or you don't pause it doesn't make much difference this is a short for al-waqfu awla al-waqfu أولى الوقف أولى What does it mean? It's better to pause أولى is better الوقف means pause الوقف أولى It is better to pause That means it is not wrong to continue. It's better to pause. The meaning will be clearer if you pause there. The second one means is a short for al al waslu awla al wasl continuation. 
Al wasl awla, continuation is better. It's to continue is better, but if you don't continue, if you pause, make a pause there, it's not going to change the meaning. Al waqful jaiz, I have explained to you. And then these three dots written twice, they are called al muanaqa. Al muanaqatu. It literally means embracing from unuq what does unuq mean? neck unuq anaqa means he held him by, by the neck put his neck into the into, he, into his neck muanaqa you will find them in two places very close to each other that means if you Make a pause at the first sign, don't make a pause at the second sign. Zalikal kitabu la raiba fi. Zalikal kitab, that's the book. La raiba fi, there's no doubt in it. Or you say, Zalikal kitabu la raiba fi. You don't stop with the first one, you stop with the second one. So, <clears throat> these are the uh, most important things that I wanted to explain to you in the text of the Qur'an and uh, the time is up inshallah we'll continue later assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen nabiyyina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd brothers and sisters Inshallah, we'll read the first lesson, Surah Al-Fatiha. First of all, we will listen, listen to a recitation of this uh, Surah, uh, Inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. Now in this surah, the basmala. That is the formula Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is part of the surah. With regard to other surahs, there is a difference of opinion whether it is part of the surah or not. But with regard to Surah Al-Fatiha, it is part of the surah. You notice that Bism, the Alif has been omitted. And the, 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 the word is ism, which starts with a, which commences with a hamzatul wasl. There are some ten nouns in Arabic which start, which commence with a hamzatul wasl. 
you have learned some of them, Ism and uh, Ibn, yes, in the same way Ibnatun, feminine of Ibn is Ibnatun. So the other words, inshallah, you will learn later, they are very important. But with verbs, of course, there is a rule. But verbs having five letters or six letters, uh, the hamza is hamza al-wasl, like in kasara, in, uh, in taqama, uh, the, the maadi, like in kasara, in kisarun, masdar, in kasir, amr, in sarafa, in sarifu, in sarif. So, istaqbala, istaqbilu, istiqbal, masdar, has no. Uh, Hamza al Wasl and Istaqbil Amr has also Hamza al Wasl. So in verbs it is uh, regular. Uh, Arabs call it Sama Qiyasi. Qiyasi means based on a rule. Sama'i. Sama'i is hearing, based on hearing, just no rule. So there are about 10 nouns out of which I have mentioned Ibn. Ism and uh, Ibn. Hamza al Wasl actually has been imported because the word starts with a sukun. And in Arabic, is not permitted to start with a sukun. Of course, in English language, you have star, for example, speed. So you can start with a sukun. But in Arabic, it's not allowed. So once a word starts with a sukoon, you have to import an alif. This imported alif is called hamzatul wasl. It drops the moment there is another letter preceding it, which will prop, support it, you drop the. So you say ismuhu, or you say masmuhu, the, uh, the, the meme, the fatah of the meme, suffices, so there is no need for the imported alif. Masmuhu. Bismihi. So the, the kasra of ba that supports the, the beginning. But usually the alif is retained in writing. But in the Quran, especially in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Basmala, it is omitted because of its constant use. It is omitted, but there are, I have given example for Sabbih, Bismi Rabbika al where Alif is retained. There is no rule about it in the Quran. Sometimes it is retained, sometimes it is retained. And it is not retained because it is not pronounced when it is preceded by another word. But when it starts a word, of course you have to retain it. The word Allah is a proper name and some people say it is derived from Aliha to, uh, to be a surprise or something like that. But uh, the, uh, the, the considered opinion is that it is a proper name, it is not derived. And the Alif Lam at the beginning uh, is, it looks like Alif Lam. Uh, which is the definite article, but it's not a definite article. It's not a definite article. Of course, it's omitted. The alif is omitted. Uh, for example, lillahi, billahi. I don't know how to pronounce. But in one case, the alif is retained. It's ya Allah. Ya Allah. You don't say ya Allah. You have to say ya Allah. The alif is retained. Hamzat al wasl is retained in this case. But in other cases, it is omitted. When you write Lillah, Allahu, if you want to write Lillahi, for Allah, or belonging to Allah, what do you do? You just omit the Alif, it becomes Lillah. But in India and Pakistan, you will find Lillah written like this. 
with other love, which is wrong. There are a lot of mistakes in the Indian subcontinent with regard to Arabic, prevalent there. And unfortunately, nobody corrects them. And so one of them is this, Lilla, writing, it's being written with three lambs, which is wrong. So if you want to write Lilla, just remove the alif, it becomes Lilla. So Ya Allah, Hamzatul Wasl is pronounced Hamzatul Qatar. If you remember, Hamzatul Wasl or Hamzatul Qatar. Hamzatul Qatar is pronounced always like Anta, Ana, wa Anta. But Ibnun, Hazabni, you say Hazabni, Aynabnuka, Masmuka, the alif is omitted. And in the Mus'haf, the Hamzatul Alama, the, the sign of Hamzatul Wasl is always written. In normal Arabic orthography, it's not written. Only in certain cases to show or to teach. But normally, the sign, which is called uh, Sula, is omitted. But in the Mus'haf, somebody asked me, the meaning of Mus'haf, so I'll explain to you. Al-Qur'an and Mus'haf, we have got two words. Mus'haf is the, the, the printed form of the Qur'an, or the written form of the Qur'an. That's why you can speak of, I have uh, Mus'haf, I've got a Pakistani Mus'haf, I've got a Saudi Mus'haf, I have a German Mus'haf, but you can't say I have got a, I have got a Pakistani Qur'an, no. In Arabic, we say, in the Mus'hafun Kabirun, or Mus'hafun Sagirun. I got a large copy, a small copy. In the Mus'hafun Pakistaniyun, Mus'hafun Saudiyun. We won't know it's a Quran. We say, Ja'a fil Qur'ani. Ja'a fil Quran. Quran, it has, it's used in the Quran. But when you speak of spelling, you say, it is written like this in the Mus'haf, because it, it, it has to do with writing. So there, there's a difference. The, the Egyptians don't use the word Qur'an, because Qaf for them is a problem. They can't pronounce Qaf, so they <coughs> make it Hamza, in, Muslim, but in the Qur'an they don't want to make it Hamza, so they avoid using the word Qur'an, they say Mus'haf always which sometimes leads to misunderstanding. So it should be Mus'haf for the written, uh, printed form, and Qur'an for the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, you see the Hamza, Hamza al-Wasl, always in the Qur'an written with Hamza al-Wasl, the Sula, the, uh, it's a small sod, the word, uh, the head of the letter sod, which is written, to uh, indicate it is to be joined, not to be separated. We have the verb Rahima Yarhamu. Rahima Yarhamu. To pity, to show mercy. Rahmatun, Mazdar. There are other Mazdars also. Barhamatun is Mazdar Mimi. You must have learned Mazdar Mimi. Barhamatun. And the word Rahim, Rahimun Arhamun. Rahimun is the womb of, in which the child is uh, formed. It's Rahimun. And plural is Arham. Rahima Yarham. Rahima. Which group is this? Samia Yasma. In my book, I use it Ea group. Ea group, yes. So, Samia Yisma, a group, Rahima Yarhamu. Ismu al-Fa'il is Rahimun. But you know, Rahima is an action which does not have a beginning and an end. It's a continuous process. Rahima is to pity, to show mercy. So in, in this case, 
For example, Samia, you have a beginning and an end. You hear and then you stop hearing. Akala, you have a beginning and an end. Shariba, you have. But Marida, he fell sick. You can't say in which point of time he fell sick. So you don't have ismul fa'il from verbs which do not have a beginning and an end in, 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 in point of time. You have rahimun, but that's not very often used. Rahimun, one who shows mercy. But the word rahimun, you know the word fa'il, the, the pattern fa'il shows an inherent quality that is uh, in the person like uh, karimun noble this nobility does not uh, start and end sakhiyun generous so rahimun is a ismul mubalagha sigat al mubalagha and also rahman as you have seen before, the, the, the pattern fa'alan uh, signifies a momentary action. Atshan, atshan, thirsty. Jawan, hungry. Ghadban, angry. All momentary actions. Mostly, not kaslan. Kaslan is a <laughs> continuous process. <laughs> so, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim the two aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attribute of mercy it is inherent in him which is Rahim and the word Rahman signifies the manifestation of his attribute in time and space in a particular time in a particular space the manifestation it will be momentary, it will be time bound. But the, the word Rahim is the inherent quality which is, doesn't get separated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The next ayah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hamida Yahmadu, also Ia group. Hamdun. Hamida Yahmadu. Hamidun, is Fa'il, is Maful, Mahmudun. The Bafa'ala Hamada means to praise excessively. Hamada. What will the Ismail Maful from this? Muhammadun. Muhammadun, one who praises excessively, and Muhammadun, one who is praised excessively. So Muhammad is the ism al from Hamada, second conjugation, second form. But from the first form, Hamidun ism al Mahmudun ism al Now with regard to Al, we have learned in the book that it is definite article. But there are different uh, three kinds of al, which will, which I will explain now. The one that we have already learned is called alif lam al ahdiya. Alif Lam Al Ahdiya. Al Ahd means reference, previous knowledge, acquaintance. So Alif Lam Al Ahdiya refers to a thing that is already known to you. Known to you and known to your listeners or readers. If you are reading a book, 
When I speak to a man and say, Ja'ar Rajulu, the man came, that means you know him. And your listener also knows him. Otherwise, if you say, Ja'ar Rajulu, if you say, he will say, he will get confused. May I ask you, whom do you mean? So, al ahdiya means, the thing is known to you and known to your listeners and readers. Now, this knowledge common to you and to your readers and your listeners, the source of this knowledge is three things, one of three things. It's all mentioned in the book, you can see. I'll explain to you. Number one, the thing is right in front of you. So you and your listener know this. Supposing there is a book here, and I tell my listener, Hatil Kitab, give me the book. He knows what you mean, because it's right in front of you. There is a man, maybe very close to you, or maybe a little far away, but you say, Nadi Rajul, Nadi Rajul. What does that mean? Call, call. call the man. Nada, Yunadi, Amr, Nadi. Nadi Rajul, call the man. Your listener will understand because he is seeing this man. This is called Al Ahd al Huduri. Al Ahd Al Ahd Al Huduri. Al Huduri means presence. You know him because he is present right in front of you either the book or the man or whatever it is. So al ahd al huduri This is one source of common knowledge between you and the listener. The second type is al ahd al dhikri The object or the man or the person has been mentioned before, either by you or by the listeners. So, you, second time you refer to him. For example, you say, Ja'ani Rajulun. Ja'ani Rajulun. A man came to me. Now here, he is unknown to you. Then, second sentence you say, War Rajulu Kana Ghadbana. The man was angry. Now, Ar-Rajulu Kana Ar-Rajulu Ghadbana. He has already been mentioned, so you know him. So it is called Al-Ahd Al-Zikri. Al-Ahdu Al-Zikriyu. That is knowledge gained by mentioning him or his being mentioned before. Ishtaraitu kitaban. I bought a book. Wal kitabu mufidun jiddan. The book is very useful. So you already mentioned. And then second time you say, Wal Kitabu. The third type is based on, the third type, the common knowledge is based on context. On context. So when you tell your friend, I'm going to the office, you know which office he, he means. Because he, he, he knows that he works in a particular office. We say, I, I, I'll ask the friend. They know which friend he's meant. His previous, from the context, they were different. Supposing in a grammar class, there's a question in grammar. So the students, one of the students says, 
نسأل الشيخة نسأل الشيخة we ask the teacher that means the grammar teacher not the the Quran teacher because the context determines what you mean but in the Quran class we say نسأل الشيخة that means the Quran teacher so that is called al ah al zihni al ahdu al zihniyu zihni mental So all these three types are Alif Lam al Ahdiyya, referential Alif Lam. Whether it is based on, the knowledge is based on the presence of the thing, or because it has been mentioned before, or the context determines it. For example, you say, Naltaqi fil Masjid, Naltaqi fil Masjid, we will meet in the mosque. You know in which mosque you, you both meet. So, you need not explain. So, Naltaqi fil Masjidi. Somebody else, when they say Naltaqi fil Masjidi, it's a different mosque, not the same mosque. So, it depends upon the context. So, this is one type. Another type. This is. Alif Ba Jim. Number two. Alif Lam Al Jinsiyatu. Jins means genus. It is the same word. It's a Latin word, genus. Generic. Now, when you use alif lam, this type of alif lam has nothing to do with previous knowledge. It refers to the genus. Well, for example, you say, Al-Labanu Mufidun. Al-Labanu Mufidun. Milk is useful. Al-Inabu Agla Min At-Tuffahi. I don't know whether the rates are. Al-Inabu, the grapes, the grapes are. Agla, more expensive, than the apples. Means the, the genus. Not a particular thing which I know, you know. It means what, what is known as Inab, what is known as Tufah. This also has two types one type is known as listigraq al jins alif lam al jinsiyah listigraq al jins i'll explain to you it means when you say al al rajul it means every member of the genus sometimes not always for example you say Al insanu yamutu. Al insanu yamutu. Man dies. Does it mean every insan? Every, every human being? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, al insanu yamutu. Here, al insan. Alif lam is al jinsiya. The stigraq al jins. To comprehend all the members of the genus.
In the Quran, Qulika al-insanu da'ifa. Man was created weak. It's every man. How strong he may be, if he has a stroke, it's finished. If he has a heart attack, finished. He can't walk. So every man has been created weak. الاستغراق الجنس استغراق استغراق which which باب is this باب تام استغرق استغرق غرق means to uh, to drown to get drowned استغرق استغرق means to to be completely covered الاستغراق الجنس example as I told you Al-insan yamutu, man dies, it means every man dies. All, all, all human beings die. The second one is libayan <clears throat> al-haqiqa. To, it points only to the, the, uh, the fact. Not, it doesn't uh, comprehend all the numbers. For example, الرجالو أقوى من النساء. الرجالو men are stronger than women. Does it include all men and all women? No, no. Yeah, some women are stronger than men. So it's a it's to to state the fact generally as a rule, but doesn't. In, uh, refer to every member of the genus. Libayanil Haqiqa. Here Al Insanu. Yamutu. Arrijalu. Aqwa. Mina. Now we come to the third type, which is called al azaida extra L, extra L. Is it clear now? The istighraq al-jins means you can use the word every instead of al. Kullu insanin yamut. If you say it like that, it will be correct. But in the other sense, and then in the other example, you can't say. Kullu riyali akwa minan nisa, you can't say. The third type is al azaidatu, extra al This means that certain words, Arabic words, have al, which cannot be separated. They don't mean anything. For example, you say alladhi, you got al there. Alladhi, allati, alladhani, there's al. In the same way you have al-qahiratu, the Cairo, which has got al-qahiratu. Some countries, names of human beings, countries. Now Pakistan, some Arabs say Pakistanu, some Arabs say Al-Pakistan. So they <coughs> add Alif Lam, 
but certain countries, there is consensus. Al Brazil, Al Brazil, the Al Yaban, Al Yaban. They don't remove Al from Yaban, Al Yaban. Al Hind, Al Hind is very old, ancient from the pre-Islamic times. They say Al Hind. So these are extra alif lam. You can't remove them. They don't have a special meaning. They don't add to the meaning as we have seen in other places. But there is one type which may add to the meaning and that is names of persons, human beings. You may add alif lam to suggest that he has a quality which is contained in the name. For example, there is a name Asad, proper name. Asad, what does it mean? Lion. Lion. Some say, some, some, it's very common, they say Al Asad, Ja Al Asad. We use Al Asad. You want to suggest that it has got the qualities of a lion. To suggest al fadlun, fadlun is uh, favor. You also say al fadlu. Show that he has got this quality. Abbasun. What does Abbas mean? Frowning. What do I mean? Abbas is a is mubalagha. Always with a frowning face. Abbasun. Abbasa ya Abbasu. Abbasa wa tawalla. Abus. Abus is also one who is always frowning. <clears throat> in, the, in the Quran, the day of judgment is referred to as Abus and Qamtarira. It's a frowning day. So, <clears throat> Abbas, the, the, one of the uncles of the Prophet Sallallahu Abbas. Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. We all say Al Abbas, Ja Al Abbas. We say Ja Al Abbasu. You refer to, you want to suggest that he is frowning, he is angry. So this is uh, one of the types of extra Al, which has some meaning, which has meaning. But here also, one does not have a choice to always use, you know, but it's uh, limited to the Arab use of this al. We, for example, we, we don't say al Muhammad. We never say this. But al Abbas, al Fadl, al uh, Asad. Mostly, when, when they want to refer to the qualities that the word suggests, you can add al. Now, in al Hamdu. If you see the Urdu translations, or even some of the English translations, will say, Alhamdu means all types of, uh, of praise. This is al istighraq al jiz al Al-Islam, Alhamdu. Here, Al is not the, this type. This is the generic uh, Al. So, al Alhamdu means all types of of praise. There is Muqtada, Alhamdu, Khabar, where is the Khabar? Lillahi, Shibu Jumla, Alhamdulillahi, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people translate, may, may all praise be to Allah. This is your wish, but that's not right. Allah, uh, the praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He deserves it. You need not wish it. So, all praise belong to Allah. And then, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Rabb Al Alameen is Badal of Allah. Alhamdulillah, who is Allah? Rabbil Alameen, Badal. And you know, Badal is 
إعراب إعراب الطابع it follows the مبدل منه whether it is منصوب مجرور مرفوع it will follow the for example رأيت محمدا رأيت أخاك محمدا I saw your brother محمد أين أخوك محم محمد سلمت على أخيك محمد so the بدل follows the مبدل منه in its grammatical cases <coughs> has the same case as the uh, as the مبدل منه رب العالمين رب has got plural also أرباب رب أرباب lords أرباب it also has a feminine form ربة <coughs> ربة البيت means housewife the lady of the house ربة البيت it's not a modern expression it is not a modern expression it is a poet belonging to the Abbasid period Bash, uh, Abu Nuwas he has a couplet his, he had a maid at home and she said you write qasidas, you write odes in praise of the kings and the, the, the ministers why don't you write something about me so he said okay I'll write he said Rababatu Rabbatul Bayti Rababa her name he said Rababatu Rabbatul Bayti Rabbatul Bayti is the old expression Rababa is the the housewife Rababatu Rabbatul Bayti Tasubbu al-khalla fi al-zayti Tasubbu what does Tasubbu mean? Sabba yasubbu To pour To pour Sabba yasubbu Tasubbu al-khalla fi al-zayti Khal what does it mean? لا خل هنوز تصب الخل في الزيت الخل is vinegar الخل الخل ترى الحديث خير الإدام خلو خير الإدامي الخلو the best إدام what is إدام إدام is a companion of the bread whatever is eaten with the bread it is either salan or whatever it is yes yes خير الإدامي الخلو vinegar is the best companion of the bread تصب الخلة في الزيت in oil she she pours I don't know what happens then you make vinegar and put it on salad they said ربابة ربة البيت تصب الخلة في الزيت لها عشر دجاجات she had ten seconds لها عشر دجاجات وديك حسن الصوت. yes and a rooster with a beautiful voice. أيها. رباب ربة البيت تصب الخلة في الزيت لا عشر دجاجات وديك حسن الصوت. حسن الصوت. so I say I want to tell you that this is a very old expression ربة البيت and even today it is used, Rabbatul Bayt, meaning in, in the forms which you get to fill in, you, you, some, some ladies write, Rabbatul Bayt, Rabbatul Baytin, that is a housewife. Arbab, I have given you ayat in which uh, I, uh, Arbab is being used. Let us read this ayah. Ah, in page 10, on page 10. Ya sahibayis, ya sahibayis sijini, 
أرباب متفرقون خير أم الله الوا أم الله الواحد القهار يا صاحبي السجن أو oh my two companions two companions of the uh, of the prison two companions who are in the prison أرباب متفرقون خير where is the مبتدا أرباب but it's it's uh, indefinite. Can you have an indefinite uh, noun as a muqtada? It's a question and also it is, it is, it is man'ut. Ma ma man'ut, man indefinite noun can be a muqtada. Arbabun mutafarriqoon. Arbabun mutafarriqoon. Are diverse lords better than Allah? أرباب وفتاخون خير أم الله الواحد القهار الله دي الميت قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم say oh this addressed to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أهل الكتاب oh people of the book people of the scripture that is Jews and Christians تعالوا إلى كلمة come to a common term تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء سواء is common بيننا وبينكم common between you and us that is Muslims and Christians Muslims and Jews they have this concept أن لا نعبد إلا الله that we do not worship except Allah anybody else except Allah that is a common thing ولا نشرك به شيئا and we do not associate anyone with him ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله and that some of us do not take others as lords ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا بعضنا بعض is subject فاعل when بعضا is مفعول به first Second ma'afool is arbaab. Ittakhadha takes two objects, two ma'afool bihi. Ittakhadtuhu khalilan. I have taken him as my friend. Follow me? So, ittakhadha ba'aduna ba'adhan. Some of us, others, arbaaban min dunillah, other than Allah, we take them, treat them as lords and follow their commandments. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they turn back, turn away, فَقُولُوا Tell them, فَقُولُوا شْحَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ Bear witness that we are, we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, another, اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا They betook, they have taken أَحْبَارَهُمْ They're scholars. وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ and their monks رَاهِب singular is رَاهِبٌ رَاهِب plural رُهْبَانٌ رُهْبَانٌ أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُهْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا lords مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَذَنَ اللَّهِ وَالْمَسِيحَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ and Christ the son of Mary they have also taken him as lord okay so Rabb al-Alameen, Alam is universe, world, it is from Ali ma ya'alamu, Ali ma ya'alamu, which uh, group? Samia. Samia. Yes, a yeah, group, Ali ma ya'alamu, to know. Alam, there are a few words that come on, on the measure of Fa'al with the fatha. Fa'al, of course, you know it's from fa'al. Fa'al means a means of knowing. Alam is a means of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The universe. In the same we have khatamun. Khatama yakhtimu is to stamp, seal. Khatamun is the means of sealing, the instrument of sealing. Khatamun. Alamun is like that. Sound masculine plural. 
which end in wall noon in, mas in marfu' fam and ya noon in majroor and mansub cases this has a rule not all nouns for example rajulun you can't say rajulun kitabun you can say kitabun <laughs> so what is the rule there are two types of nouns which take this form, wow noon form. The first is proper names. Proper names. For example, Muhammadun, you can say Al Muhammaduna. Ahmadu, say Al Ahmaduna. Please note here that when a proper name becomes plural, it takes Alif Lam. Why? Because it is no more a proper name. If there are ten people, ten persons called Muhammad, all of them Muhammad, you can't pinpoint them. So they, they become ordinary, it doesn't remain a proper name. So the moment you make plural of proper names, you must add Arif Lam. Ahmadu, plural is Al Ahmaduna. Ibrahim, Al Ibrahimuna. So proper names can take that, of course, certain. Exceptions, nouns with uh, ta marbuta, hamza, you can't say al hamzuna. There are certain rules, exceptions. But ordinary, proper names, they take alif lam, wow uh, noon. This is first type. Second type is uh, derived nouns referring to human, uh, male human beings. Male human beings like mother reason, so drive down, it's a file, or it's a full man, a man, praiseworthy man, Mahmoud. You can say how they are praiseworthy. Salihun, pious, good, say Salihuna, mother reason, mother reason, Muhandis, engineer, Muhandisuna. So a derived noun, but referring to you, a human being, male human being. So feminine, proper name we have, feminine uh, plural, we have alifta. So this is only for males. So for example, you have haidun or murdi'un. Hamilun, hamilun is pregnant. We can't say hamiluna, because this is refers to you, a human being, but feminine human being. Should be masculine human being. Uh, so that's the rule. But there are certain nouns which take the wow noon and ya noon uh, as an exception. One of them is alam. Al alam, rule is al alamuna. Worlds, creations. It is a broken plural also. Alamun, awalimu, awalimu, also used. But the more uh, the, the frequently used is alamuna. Alamuna is marfur. Majrur mansub is alamina. Rabbul alamina. خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَالَمِينَ مَفْعُولْ بِهِ خَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَالَمِينَ There are other nouns also. سَنَةٌ What does it mean? Here. سَنَةٌ has got سَنَوَاتٌ feminine plural. سَنَوَاتٌ Also سِنُونَ بَوْنُونَ سِنُونَ But Sin has got kasra here. Sanatun has got fatha, but sinuna has kasra. Sinuna. Mansu majroor farm is sinina. For example, you say, Marrat sinuna. Many years have passed. Marrat, marra yamurru. Marrat sinuna. Which one? 
بضع سنين يس عشت في المدينة المنورة سنين I lived in Medina for years سنين so سنة سنون and another أهل people or household people أهل it also has they, of course it has a broken rural أهالين but also we have regular masculine rural أهلون أهلون يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم save yourselves وأهليكم and your household النار قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم so where is the noon gone أهليكم أهلونا أهلينا and because of إضافة أهليكم يعني قو أنفسكم قو قو is from what word ها وقا يقي وقا يقي الأمر is قي yes there is a, uh, is a joke told about, not a joke, it's a story told about one of the ancient during the Abbasid period. There, were, uh, there was a professor or a teacher who was teaching Arabic grammar uh, at a mosque. There was another teacher of an inferior quality and he did not like this man. There were many students with him, so he didn't like, he had a sort of jealous about him. So he went to the police and said there is a, a madman in the mosque. You must uh, remove him from the mosque, mad. He said, how do you know? He said, I have heard him uttering things, you know, which are nonsensical. The policeman said, okay, I, I must ascertain myself. So he said, okay, you come to, to, me, to him in such a place, such a, such a time. So he went there. This, uh, the, the other teacher went to him and said, Sheikh, what is the Amr from Waqa? I said, Qi. He said, how to, uh, please tell me with the Isnad. With the, he said, Qi, Qiya, Qu. Qi, Qiya, Qina. He said, well, can you repeat it? He said, Qi, Qiya, Qu, Qi, Qiya, Qina. Please, another time. The policeman came. <laughs> Where is did you hear him what he's saying? <laughs> this is uh, madman's uh, utterance. Qi qiya qu qi qiya qina. So, so qa wa qa yaqi, in the amr, the amr, the wow is lost, first radical, and the third radical is also lost in budare, the first is lost. And the Amr is second, the third is last. So only Qi. Qi Qu Anfusakum. Qu takes two objects. Rabbana Atina fi dunya wa qina azab al nar. Na is the first object, azab al nar. Azaba is the second object. Wa qina azab al nar. So Qu Anfusakum, save yourselves, wa halikum and your household, nara. This is the second object. I think we stop here and continue inshallah tomorrow. The time is up. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.